Design Today's guest is a friend and former coworker of mine, Ken Kirkland. I met him a couple years ago when I started uh, my first day at the job at Domo. And uh, from the very beginning, from the get-go, I could tell that Ken Kirkland was one of those guys who's got a lot of experience, great creative mind, uh, mature thought leader, and just all around good guy. I picked his brain from the very beginning. I always wanted to know his stories, his thoughts, what he was working on, what he was doing, just because I could learn so much from him. He was always providing me with valuable insight, and I thought, you know what, I'm bringing him on the show today. Um, Ken just started a new job over at Workfront. He's the new guy where he's a creative manager. He's managing a new team. They've got a new product that he's working on. And being the new guy, I recognize that there's always those kind of thoughts, those complicated things that go through your mind as far as what to expect, what's the culture going to be like, what should I do, what do I do at lunch. Uh, we can overthink it at times, uh, but we really are just trying to make a good impression. I know we've got designers coming out of school or boot camp or even just switching new jobs. And you're always kind of having those little butterflies in the stomach going, what should I expect in those first couple days on the job? Uh, and I brought Ken on so we could talk about it because he's living it right now. There's things that we should do, things we should don't, and all those things we'll get into on the podcast today. Stay tuned. Here we go. Design Today featuring Ken Kirkland. Let's get started. Welcome, Ken, to Design Today. We are rolling. Um, happy that you took time to come uh Join me on the show today. Yeah, I was happy to be invited. No, it's cool. It uh, gives us an opportunity to see each other, which it's been a couple months now. How many months? No. Three, four? Uh, yeah, three, four, somewhere. And uh -huh. I missed you, Ken. I missed you. I didn't know what to do without you. Well, that's probably not true. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ken is, um, for those who are listening, Ken is someone who I immediately looked up to when I was at Domo in my first couple weeks. Uh, I saw uh, his... Obviously, his experience spoke to me first and foremost. And then after getting to see him, get him, see him interact with the team, it was very obvious that he's got a sense of maturity. He's done this before. He knows what he's doing. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, but in probably in those first couple of weeks, I asked you, I was like, hey, will you do a little one-on-one -on -one with me and tell me what you know? I do remember that. And like those are the types of things that I love learning from the people who've been doing this for a while. And hence the reason I wanted you to come on the show. Uh, we're we're going to be talking a little bit about... Uh, you know, the designer and the design process of I've been interviewing, I've landed a job and now it's my first day on the job. Um, and first day on the job, what do I do? Right. In those first couple of months on a new job, it's important to make an impression, uh, a good impression too. At that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not a bad one. And being in that you've now just switched jobs, you're over at Workfront. Um, I want to, uh, maybe you could give us some insight about some of the things that you've learned uh, throughout your career, but now even doing it more recently, maybe some things that you've picked up on now you know, this time around. But before we get into that, maybe you can give us a little bit of background on yourself, uh, help those who are listening understand a little bit of your experience. Yeah, so that's very nice, by the way. Um, that's a very kind intro. Um, so yeah, I've been designing uh, digital interface design, I guess, for Ugh, a long time <laughs> 15 years i guess since the web's been a thing sure. um and um got gotten to ux naturally before that was a a, a title you know um mm -hmm. when i when i started designing uh you know websites i was kind of more on the marketing end of design in the yeah. earlier days and, and back then i coded a lot of my own stuff as yeah. well you know being a jack of all trades uh in the industry was actually really helpful because there wasn't a whole lot of people who knew how to do it. Yep. Um, so, yeah, gravitated towards uh, what we currently call UX design and understanding the um, what people are trying to achieve, what's what's their objective, what are they using this for, mm -hmm. you know, jobs to be done mindset. Uh, just, we didn't call it that, right? It was just, right. Um, so that really had always really intrigued me. And then uh, after... Uh, uh, getting more into UX, uh, discovered enterprise software and fell in love with the, the big uh, problems to mm -hmm. solve mm -hmm. in that space. And, and you yeah, I love it. The places you've worked at over the last few years. Uh, so currently at Workfront, mm -hmm. um, uh, we build work management software right. for enterprise. And before that, as you know, Domo. Domo. So for about three-ish years, yep. big data platform. Um, before that, it was at Adobe for about three years. 
uh, worked on the Creative Cloud team there. And before that, just lots of local, that was like the start of my enterprise design experience with, with Adobe. Adobe. Yep. Um, and before that, a lot of local uh, companies building websites, marketing Startups? material, print. Um, no, more more established okay. uh, local okay. um, tech business, sure. you know, companies. But Cool. Um, yeah. So you've been the new guy on the job a few times in your career. Sure. <laughs> And I think that's kind of the insight that I, I wanted to see if we could kind of mine that information. Because uh, there's a lot of resources out there about what to do, what not to do in those first couple months. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I was just reading something today talking about things that you should avoid doing. Uh, and there are things that you should always avoid doing on the job. But this article, was, what we're saying is that the things that you do negatively on the job may be magnified in those first couple months because you're really under yeah. the microscope where Absolutely. a passing comment or a mishap here or there may fly under the radar later on in the job. It doesn't in those first couple months because you're kind of getting looked at through the microscope. But what's your experience been in those first couple months or even, you know, managing or seeing people who are in those first couple months? What have you seen be a benefit? Uh, what stood out to you in, in your process through that? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So I think I shared that this with you before, but it's just, uh, to me, it was a great learning experience. So starting work at, so th it's a good comparison for me starting when I started the job at Domo. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I came in, there was a lot of, there was a lot of things that were still, a lot of processes still weren't quite, they hadn't quite figured out. Uh, there was a, there was some pieces where the maturity level wasn't quite there, like style guide, for example. Was, sure. They were working on it, but there were still some things that wasn't, you know, quite there yet. Just yeah. little things like that. And very well intentioned. Yeah. I came in and um, I pretty much looked at the landscape and went, oh, well, I want to be really useful right off the bat. And I know that I can help and, and do some of these things or fix these things, sure, you know? Sure. Um, and just really, a, you know, just went after it and was like, Oh, I can fix this. And I know how to take care of that. I know how to make that better. I, I've, I've seen it referred to as uh, super hearing, you uh -huh. know, or coming in with that superhero mindset that it's one of the things you don't want to do uh -huh. <laughs> coming in. Um, and I kind of learned that the hard way, just experience, you know, after doing a couple months, of behaving that way in my mind i'm thinking like man everyone's gonna be so glad i showed up sure be so happy that i came in here with all this expertise and all that you know yeah uh, and it became clear getting into that like oh no i'm just a jerk like <laughs> but I, you probably weren't acting like a jerk i, no, know, you, I, I know you well enough that you weren't acting like a jerk so what mm -hmm. was it that came off then as what's this guy doing what is it about that uh so what I've what I've since learned um, that the I think why why people have a lot of uh, such an adverse reaction to that and it creates so much friction it's it's like someone comes into your house and just kind of goes oh you're doing that mm -hmm. wrong you're doing that wrong and you're mm -hmm. like I'm doing this for a reason there is context there's history who are you yeah. you know what <laughs> just come in here and tell me what to do you yeah. know um, it it creates a lot of uh, barriers between people and negativity just because you're but what if you've got 20 years of experience what if you've been doing this for a while and you do know what you're doing um it doesn't matter i i to me i look at it as solving a design problem mm -hmm. um design thinking using the ux process right? yeah you don't go in let's say you're gonna build a a website for a company let's say you yeah. work at an agency and you're working on their branding or everything you don't go in and say we've figured it out <laughs> this is exactly what you're going to do. Uh -huh. This is what your brand's going to look like. Here's how you're going to do it. And like, you know, you kind of chuckle the setting up that scenario. Cause like you wouldn't do that. Right? right. The first thing you do is ask questions. Yep. Right. You try to understand. This should be easy for UX designers to understand. <laughs> right. Right. Cause it's by trade what we're supposed to be trained to do. Yeah. And, but, but when it's out of context, I think sometimes we forget that uh -huh. these are some basic principles uh -huh. that are like really important. And so actually stopping to say, you know, to ask those questions and to understand and to take the time to do your discovery. Right. And to understand uh, how's the culture work and, and, and why are things the way they are? And um, 
we as humans we we really appreciate people doing that right you know, taking the time to understand and learn so i think that's you know and you, that was something you mentioned when we were on the phone the other day that uh, this time around at workfront you've taken this approach of like i'm not going to be the superhero when i come in here i'm going to take time to ask questions and understand and mm-hmm. i thought yeah, that's obviously a very mature way of looking about it. I mean, you've obviously gone through the ringer. You've done this before and you've learned that this time around, this is how I'm going to approach it after doing the new guy multiple times throughout your career. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel that a lot of designers who are probably new in the industry, maybe still lacking the experience that, you, that you've that you got, um, maybe even those with a few years of experience. I don't know if it necessarily if it matters, but... Um, I feel like they come into the job going, I need to make sure that you feel comfortable that you made the right hire. And mm-hmm. therefore, I don't want you to have buyer's remorse. And I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure that you understand that I am the rock star that you hired. And I'm going to try and be this superhero. So it's well intended. Absolutely. Well intended. But like you mentioned, I think it comes off going like, well, you can't actually have the answer to this question because you don't have the context to what happened before it. Uh, so I do think that in those first few months, it's important to, I don't want to say sit back, relax, be lazy. It's not lazy. Yeah, it's, no, it, you, you really have to create a strategy yeah. for yourself. Like, it's not just hanging out and, you know, I'm just being a chill. New guy. And, I'm yeah. just a new guy. I'm just, yeah, I'm just new. learning. Ignore me type thing. No, you're, you're trying to dig <laughs> into it. Mm-hmm. Now, what kind of goals have you found important for you to set for yourself in those first in those first couple of months? Is there any maybe personnel goals, team goals uh, that you set or you think about as you go into it? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll reference this. I, I actually had a book suggested to me not long ago called uh, The First 90 Days, yep. which is fantastic. Uh, it, it, it's very in-depth, a lot of great insight. Um, and it's pretty much about this topic, right? yeah. starting a new job. Um, between that and just my own experience, I think some of the things that, uh, some of the goals that, you know, I think are really important, uh, in starting a new position. I, I think one is that one I've already mentioned. You need to be in that discovery, learning, try to understand mindset. Yep. And I think one of the one of the big goals as part of that is to try to understand what what's the expectations for you mm-hmm. right i almost look at it as um you know they've 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 hired you to help ease some pain help uh, you know solve uh some things that they need done um and you get a pretty good idea of what that is part of the hiring process. But when you, when you really get in there, uh, really understand the details of what that is, what do you really need from me? And, um, how can I lighten your load? And I, uh, I think that's a mindset that's actually really good. There's a difference between how can I look really good and how can I help you look good? Right. And how can I help you? Right. You've just, you know, you've hired me. What's, what's the best thing I can do right now? And so I think that's one of the goals within those first three months is making sure that you understand and manage expectations right. on you. Right. Right. Like, what are you hoping that I'm going to accomplish? Right. And then if they're unrealistic, great. You can talk about that. But it, then at least it gives you something to. Yeah. Oh, you're expecting that. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's part of that. You know, whoever your direct manager is. Uh, I think it's good to be really mindful of keeping that communication line open. Like, don't go dark. Don't disappear for a week and like have them come over and so how are things going? Yeah. Are you, you know, you have to actively be pursuing that relationship. Yeah, I, I like that one. I like the fact that uh, you, you're obviously going to have a manager. You go to a new company, you're going to have a manager trying to figure out what their expectations are of you, uh, what they hope to see from you, how, how they hope to interact with you and work with you. Uh, I think it's equally important as to find those that you'll be interacting with and working with on a daily basis and asking them. No, you're not reporting to them per se, but yep. if you're a UX designer and you're working with developers, you're working with product managers, you're working with QA, get to know them. Try and figure out what are your expectations of working with design? Mm-hmm. What what are things that have happened in the past that you liked? What are things that have happened in the past that you didn't like? Yep. Uh, how can we... I don't want to say strategize, but how can we learn from what we've done in the past and do better now here uh, in the future? I think it's a really good call out. Uh, and I would add to that, 
I think a lot of people go in and it's intuitive to build those up and down relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Like who's my manager? Who's the people maybe that are reporting to me or, sure. the, you know, I work with directly sure. on the UX team. Uh, I think we sometimes neglect side the other relationships yeah. too, right? Like who runs the PM group, you know, yep. like, but who runs the engineering department? You know, what are the, what, what are, what are some of their thoughts about working with UX here yep. and what are their expectations uh, of me? And even outside of there, you know, understanding your sales organization or your client services or, you know, yeah, making some of those connections and building those relationships uh, are, that's big. That's, that's really important for you to, you know, start integrating and being part of, the culture so i think that's a good transition because one of the other things that i think is a, a very high up on the priority list of things to establish in those first couple of months is that confidence or relationship with those that you're working with because really confidence and trust is something that does take time to build uh you know it'd be great if in every scenario you could step in and be like everyone has trust until you don't have trust but i think more often than not you do have to build a bit a bit of trust it, it is a relationship um, and trust can really be, I don't want to say broken, but, uh, uh, shaken in those early months. Um, and a shaken trust relationship is not going to help you now down the road a bit further. Mm -hmm. So what are some things that you can do to help instill trust specifically in the ones that you are working alongside, not necessarily up, mm -hmm. up the food chain or down the food chain, but side to side, what are some of those things that you can do to help instill trust and confidence? So I find something that uh, really helps with this is discovering common values. And so this is something that I, I actually spent time on in my current job, you know, starting Workfront, is uh, trying to build relationships with some of my uh, counterparts, uh, on, like on the product team, mm -hmm. people that I was working with directly, uh, and, and, uh, and my boss and, uh, and those that report to me. And sharing with them, like, hey, these are these are some core values that are important to me. This is how I work, right? You know, um, and this is how these are some uh, from a design perspective. Uh, as uh, one of my uh, cohorts, uh, Matt Bryan, uh, calls them, like these are these are my non-negotiables. You know, in design, like, sure, absolutely have to make sure we're doing these things <clears throat> and accomplishing these things. But uh, you know, how you do it, great. But being able to to uh, this, you can really flesh out common values in, in that kind of discussion. And I find in those discussions, you know, where I say like, you know, this is really important to me. And people will go like, oh, I'm so glad you said that. That's super important to me too. And I'm taking note of that, those things. Mm -hmm. like, oh, that's also important to you. Cool. Like that's, uh, and, and making sure that I build on that. Yep. Just like you would any relationship, right? Yep. It's not being super tactical about it or anything but and, and i think on the same token and i don't think you're ignoring this but on the same token i think it just is important to recognize some of like those professional uh relationships and conversations that you have i think it's just as important to have those i don't call them unprofessional but like the the real like and, and who's ken kirkland outside of work you know what is so mm -hmm. what is it that you like to do you know tell me about your family tell me about what you guys are doing this weekend you know that kind of stuff uh in fact in one article i was reading it was talking about like show up to work early not on time but early and use that extra time that you have to get to know some people who are also there mm -hmm. um or it also points out the fact that uh you're probably not gonna be as efficient in those first couple months as you will be you know a year in uh so you could use that extra time at the office and maybe with that extra time you can get to know some of the people who are there as well but i think just as important to understanding how you're going to work with other people it's important to know like who these other people are well and uh yeah, I agree. And you brought up something earlier that actually uh, touches on that, which is something that I've typically done a really bad job uh, at this, but confession lately time. got really good. Yeah, right. <laughs> lunch, right? Uh -huh. You brought up uh, you yeah. know, the lunch uh, yeah. thing earlier. You know, the, what's lunch culture? Yeah, what's lunch culture? Um, I've, I've traditionally been, you know, kind of a frugal person. And, you know, being someone that has celiac. I can't eat gluten, you know, so it's yep. like going to restaurants typically been hard. So I've always brought my lunch and sure. taken care of, you know. Um, but very often early on, you're going to get invited to lunch. Uh -huh. That's something I see all the time. Yep. You know, oh, hey, you should come to lunch with us. Don't ever say no. Go. Just go. Uh -huh. I don't care if you've already got plans, if you've already got, I've, every time that, that I have, 
That's, good. that's happened. Someone's been like, hey, you going to lunch with us. And I very nice have been, oh, I've already got a thing. You know, the the fall, the disappointment and like, all right. You know, and sometimes people will say, like, it's like, fine, if you don't like us, you know, like, uh-huh. saying, and it's like, oh, that's, that's not the impression you uh, want to make. In those yeah, first couple right. Months. And that's the kind of belief they're going to go away with. Like, all right. right, it's not someone that, you know, is going to want to hang out with us together. Because, yeah, we want to get to know the people we're going to work with personally you are building personal relationships it's not just so how do those introverts get over that because i'm very much in that boat especially yeah. when in fact at domo when we had our cubicles and stuff i started in the fall which is premier nfl season so i would take my lunchtime <laughs> to grab my plate of food throw my headphones on jump onto vikings.com and i'm listening to all like the news yeah. now very isolated very by myself. And I was okay with that, but I'm going at the same time. It took me a little bit longer to establish those lunchtime relationships that I could have been establishing because it wasn't comfortable for me. I just wanted to have my me time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said this earlier that in that first few months when you're trying to establish those relationships, trying to figure out who, you know, who, who's this new guy and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some of those routines, that's fine after you kind of get past that, but you're not under the microscope anymore, you know, but those first, it's just so important to be a little more open, a little more friendly and try to set those relationships early on. And once you're in that cadence and and things level out a little bit, yeah. And it's not like people ask you lunch every day, right? No. It's like once a week maybe or. Yeah. And early on though, it's, it happens a lot more. And so. So let's talk about this idea of lunch culture a little bit more because I think that's something that people can get, can get tied up on. Yeah. Domo makes it a little bit easier because obviously they've catered lunch. So most people are sticking around. They're having lunch at the office or mm-hmm. eating together. But uh, if that's not the case of where you work, uh, there's a lot of questions of like, you know, I'm the new guy in the job. What's do people not eat lunch? Do they work through lunch? Do they bring lunch from home and eat at their desk? Uh, do they go out? Do they go out for a half hour, an hour, an hour and a half? Uh, do they do this every day? Do they go out with friends that don't work here? You know, what What do we do? How does uh, someone go about figuring that out and playing it safe in those first couple of months? Uh, I mean, outside of lunch, you're just talking about culture, right? Yeah. And, and, and one way uh, you can define that is the, the way that we think and act to get things done. Right. Right. It just... It's, it's just social norms, you know, and, and, and those change depending on where you work. Some things might be the same. Some things may be totally different. Lunch could be one of those. Yep. And some of the things uh, within any culture are are obvious. They're they're easy to spot, right? Um, and But some of them are kind of under, you know, how people believe or their thoughts about management or leadership. Some of those are under the surface, right? Yep. And those, you don't really hear those. Those come out a little bit later, usually. So I bring that up as pay attention. Yep. Just watch and see how people, you know, behave. And it doesn't hurt to just ask questions. Yep. Um, regardless of the, of the company you're at when it gets around lunch, be like, hey, so how do you guys typically do lunch here? You know, does you, people usually bring their lunch? What's the, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to ask. Um, and outside of lunch, just other cultural things, just paying attention to how uh, uh, people act and how they respond and the things that they say. Um, I had an interesting experience actually at work like a week, uh, a couple weeks ago where, where my, my manager felt like um, I wasn't communicating very well, you know, uh, uh, like my schedule and things mm-hmm. that were going on or whatever. And I was like, what? Like it's a little bit of a shock right. to me. Like, what? why would you? And so one of the things he cited was um, uh, in my calendar that I never accept meetings as I never knows where I'm going to, if I'm coming or not. <laughs> See, I'm hoping you're laughing because Domo culture no, no one goes through it accepts meetings, right? right? If if it's on, if if I invite you to a meeting, and I don't cancel it, you'll just you'll be there. Yeah, I don't need you to click through and accept it all. But right. like work from culture is a little different, where it's if you don't if you're not accepting it, then people wonder like, are you coming? Is that? It's one of those little, just little no, things that came out. There. I'm like, all right, well, I can do that. You know, I can yeah. go through and make sure I'm accepting the meeting time so people know. But that's like a 
that's how everyone has gotten was it on board someone with it. you said works. did someone give you that feedback yeah my manager he, he was like yeah i just i never so know you're lucky to you're... get that feedback then yeah because i mean imagine that went unsaid because that is a little nuanced thing right and if how would you ever be aware of that if you didn't right. know so you're lucky that you got a manager who points out those little things for you to help you maybe avoid some of these pitfalls that's interesting and and i would say if you don't ask like you've got to be growth mindset you have to yes. you have yes, to be yes, willing yes, 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 yes. <laughs> to go how am i doing and, and i would say along this topic with your manager you got to do that yeah you create those check-ins mm -hmm. get a month in and say hey here's what i've been learning so far you know here's where i'm at these are some things i understand how are you feeling like things are going mm -hmm. is this going down the path that you were hoping yeah. for me you know but just sitting down and saying Love to get your feedback. What's going well? What can I work on? And being ready for it. Yeah. Like it, And being ready for that feedback. <laughs> yeah. Pros, cons, and all of it. Be ready for that feedback. That's always a hard part. But it is. I mean, that's that could be a podcast for another day. I know, right? <laughs> uh, gathering feedback and critique. I mean, I could go on for that for a while. But um no, I think you you've hit on something that actually that triggered a memory in my mind that when you're the new guy on the job, you really have the opportunity to reinvent yourself. So let's say there was a part of your uh, you know, own personal evaluation of yourself at your former company or your internship or whatever you were as a student, and you want to cor correct this. No one at your new job knows anything about that. They don't know your baggage. They don't know what happened before. They don't know your history. You didn't have, uh, uh, you know, you had a hard time showing up to work on time. You had a hard time showing up to meetings on time. Nobody at your new job knows this. So you've got an opportunity to reinvent yourself. Uh, you're an introvert and you'd rather be an, an extrovert. Yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> tougher, but you can work on it in a way that nobody's going to know any different. It's true. Um, so you've got this opportunity to, to reinvent yourself. And I think what you, you talked about with uh, check-ins, with one-on-ones, hopefully your manager's having those those one-on-ones. Right. Um, hopefully you can, have you ever read the book Radical Candor? Yeah. I love that book. Oh, yeah. Uh, reading it right now and amazing. It, it's, it's actually disappointing that it's taking me so long to read it. Um, it's really good. But trying to get you and your manager into that uh, quadrant of radical candor um, so that you can have this this dialogue. I think it's also important in those first few months to be a good communicator uh, with all those who are around you, an honest communicator, a, a truthful communicator. Um, as someone who's uh, hired or you know has a team that you're trying to establish a culture on your team, uh, I want to make sure that I'm just as vulnerable as I hope those on my team are willing to be vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm willing to share some of my weaknesses, some of my flaws, uh, and I hope in turn that other person is willing to share some of those weaknesses and flaws. And it's hard because you're like, I don't really know you, dude. Like, I don't really <laughs> want to share this with you. But at the same time, I'm going, listen, I'm going to be spending more time with you than I'm going to be spending with my wife this week. So <laughs> you mind right? communicating with me? <laughs> <laughs> the cold hard truth of work. It's like, wait, yep, work is my life. <laughs> it's a lot of hours. And so I think getting into that routine of being a good communicator is so important. And setting that tone early on makes things easier because you're under the microscope in those first few months. If you want to start being a communicator a month in, or I'm sorry, a year in when you feel more comfortable with that staff, great. But what happened in those first couple months when I was really trying to figure out how we were going to mold together, how we were going to work together, uh, and you weren't communicating, that makes it a lot more difficult. And those, I, th I think those, uh, the, those first few months, those first impressions are strong, mm -hmm. right? And you want those to be as good mm -hmm. and as positive as possible. And this really connects with building the relationship, right? Being vulnerable, being able to make time for those conversations. That's how that relationship is mm -hmm. built, mm -hmm. um, where you are creating trust. And and also, I think you want to create credibility yep. as well uh, in, in that uh, amount of time. And one of the things that the that book, you know, first ninety days suggests is to, is to uh, secure some early, what it calls early wins. Yep. You know, f find find you know some of those opportunities to uh, help establish value early on. Yeah. Um, and one of the ways I do that is just I just go back to I just ask. Yeah. You know, or identify you know what's really important uh, to your manager to the team right now. And how can I how can I help you succeed and and achieve that? Yep. Um, 
because that's even for me, like if I'm hiring someone and they come on as a hiring manager, um, which is a good context, kind of flip this, not just me thinking for my context, but for someone else coming in. If, if, if I, if I feel like, uh, someone coming in is, is, is being really engaged and looking for ways to help lighten my load, Mm -hmm. that's, you know, it's great. (laughs) Yeah. I, I really appreciate that. Yep. Um, it's just, it's just how it is. Yep. You know, we just really appreciate it. Not that I want someone to come in and just do what I say. That's like not what I want. And that's even a hard cadence to get into, right? Because true collaboration doesn't mean you agree with everything I say. But somebody who's new to the job is going to want to be like, yep, I, I'm, I'm understanding. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with this. That's not necessarily what I'm looking for either. I don't want you just to say yes to everything I say. I want you to have an opinion. I want you to hear. I want you to learn and understand the context. But in the for the sake of collaboration, I want to have back and forth. I want to see things differently so that we can build something greater and that's that's a hard cadence to get into when you're new yeah because you don't really want to build a super homogenized team right where everyone's right. just thinking the same the and same, has the same opinions like great we're on a safe wavelength yeah. we did that well, cool. it's comfortable uh-huh. but it's very risky yeah um because you all share the same blind spots most likely yeah <laughs> so that's a problem um yeah and i think there's ways to do that without being combative or without uh, coming in with an attitude of you know i'm smarter than you or anything i i think that um um staying in that curious discovery uh space mm-hmm. uh, as as you do that makes a lot of sense you know uh, so when you learn of things that seem odd or unproductive you can ask this question. Yeah, unpack that for me a little. How, how did you guys come about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, have you explored some of these things before? Just I, I'm just trying to understand. You know, um, it should feel. It should. You want it to feel collaborative and, and it right. feel like you're, you know, uh, creating friction or making things hard yeah. for people. You know, I want to share a quick story before we wrap up and then kind of get your thoughts on kind of the, this closing point here. And I'm only sharing the story because you and I both know this person and I'm, and I'm going to call him out right now because this story is hilarious. And hopefully when he sees this, he's laughing at it, too. But Devin Dyer and I'm looking at the camera right now because I'm looking at him. because He's going he's gonna to like this story. Uh, very much an extrovert. Right. And early on in his internship. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to love this story, especially <laughs> especially on air. Early on in his internship, you know, Devin's very pally, right? He's he's very much everyone's friend right away. He's uh, got that personality where he can get to know people. He can uh, you know, understand people. And, you know, he becomes friends very early on. I'm a bit slower. So, unfortunately, Devin was in a scenario where uh, we got out of a meeting or something like that. And he came by... And very much like uh, in the the locker room or after a game, he slapped me on the butt and said, great job in that meeting or whatever it was. (laughs) Don't do that, kids. It's a bad idea. Uh, And if Devin's listening or watching, he's dying right now, hopefully. Uh, And I turned to him and I said, if you ever slap my butt again, you will not be working here a minute longer. (laughs) And... (laughs) <laughs> and I think I said it kind of jokingly, yeah. but still very seriously. Um, but I think <laughs> the reason I share that story is because, you know, it was very early on and it's very, it, it is when impressions are being made. But what I want to end on the point of is if you've been on the job now for three, four, five, six months and you haven't been doing some of these things that we've talked about, it's not too late to start. Oh, yeah. You know, Devin's impression that he made of slapping my butt wasn't necessarily the impression that he wanted to give, I'm sure. Um, I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> He's so, so great. <laughs> um, it's not probably the impression that he was trying to give, but it was able to be corrected in time. You know, mm-hmm. we were able to get back on the same page and towards the end of the internship, we were able to laugh about this experience and we were able mm-hmm. to joke about it. And that's the only reason I shared on air, not to embarrass them, but to, to demonstrate like, yeah, you may not have been doing things that you wanted to do early on, but it's not too late. You can start, uh, you know, getting to know the peers who are sitting around you. You can ask what's ex- expected of you. You can uh, be on time. You can, you know, look for these nuances. You can get feedback. You can do these things that we've discussed. Uh, it's not too late to start. Don't think you've missed your window of opportunity because it's not your first couple months anymore. Mm-hmm. Is that fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's great. Cool. 
Ken, I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, man, that went fast. I could, totally I could do that another hour. It wasn't hard. <laughs> well, maybe we'll have you come back and do it again then. That'd be great. Awesome. Thanks, Ken, for coming on the show. That's it for Thanks, today. Man.